Welcome back to the Essentials Club channel, I'm Maddie, and lately I've noticed that I love my essential shirt and jeans as a combo whenever I'm going out for breakfast or lunch or anything like that. It's just a nice simple go-to. But I feel like I need to spice things up a bit and add something with a bit more character to my wardrobe as a go-to. And I've been seeing a lot of those like Reformation and Faithful the Label tops that have got those cute square necks and the bunched up sleeves. So I thought I'd try and make that, but instead of making it from scratch, I'm going to show you how to upcycle it from a button-up shirt. I've never done this before so I'm kind of going to be figuring it out on the go so hopefully it makes sense. So what we need is a thrifted or old shirt, ideally a men's shirt so it's got that lower armhole and means that we have more room to be able to add that bunched up area. You don't want it to be too oversized, it's not too much of a problem if it is but that just means we need to bring it in more later. So something that's not too tight, not too loose, just perfectly that fits you. And then we'll need some elastic. I've got like a half inch and a quarter inch thickness um, elastic just because that's what I had laying around and how you figure out how much you need of it is by measuring over your shoulder from the point where it will be starting so maybe where your bra strap is and where it ends measure that and then times that by two because you need it for both sides and then if you're going to be adding any elastic to your arms or to your waist figuring out how much you need for that as well go get the certain amount that you need of elastic with the thickness, it just depends the style that you want. Obviously, thinner means you can have a bit more of like a thinner tunnel for the elastic to fit in. The thicker ones, obviously, a more thicker, exaggerated tunnel for it to fit in. And then you'll also need some matching thread to your shirts. Some elastic showering thread if you decide to go with that tutorial, which I'll show you in one of them. Some fabric chalk in case you want to draw out any lines before you cut. A pair of scissors. Measuring tape. Some pins. A sewing machine. And one thing that I've also done as well is I've got this piece of paper and I actually mapped out the styles that I'm going to be creating before I sew just so I have a vision of what I'm working towards and not just like creating it on the fly and it becomes a mess. So that's always handy, not necessary, but handy. So that's everything we need. I'll talk you through the steps and show you how to make your own cute go-to top to wear with jeans or a skirt or anything like the brunch picnic vibes. So I've got my first victim laid out here and the first thing that I'm going to do is cut out the neckline so it's nice and square. I'm going to have it mirrored on the front and back so I'm just going to have it laid out flat and just cut it both together. And where we'll be cutting to is the point on the sleeves where it starts to curve and go underneath. That's going to be our point where we cut across. So we're just finding where it's straight and where it starts to curve, that's where we'll cut across. That happens to be just under this button, which I kind of like, I'm going to get rid of and then I'll add some interfacing to clean it up later. When I'm cutting this area, I'm just going to make sure that with my elastic that I'll be using in there, that I have enough room from this seam line of the arm for it to fold under and this to then sit in there. So by laying that down, I figured out I need to cut in here, which ends up being about an inch from that seam line. So I'll follow that to that point, cut across, do the same thing here and cut up, making sure I'm an inch away from that seam line so I have enough room for it to fold under and hide the elastic in there. So see how that goes. So I've cut off this little section of the shirt and now I have something that kind of resembles the style of shirt that we're going to end up with. So now that we've got those bits cut out, we're actually just going to cut where this corner is and to that seam line. Therefore, these little flappy bits can easily fold under on their own and the elastic can go in there. And that means we can just clean up this hemline when we get to that point as well. So let's do that on this side too. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean these edges that we've cut around there. I'm just going to do a zigzag on the edge so it doesn't fray. Well, obviously if you have an overlocker you can do that. And then once I've done that I'm going to fold it under. So it's just like doing a normal hem but by folding it under and having that larger seam allowance means it will have the tunnel for the elastic to be able to thread through. So I'll show you that when I get to that point. I 
I've just set up my machine and around those edges in the sleeves where we just cut, I'm just going to do a zigzag all around the edge so that keeps it nice and clean. Meaning we can just do one fold when we come to cleaning that hem area. Like one inch seam allowance from the seam line there. And I've just gone around and zigzagged it all on this edge where we cut. So it's nice and clean and when we go to fold it in ways, it's just one fold and nice and clean. So now that I've cleaned up those edges just by zigzagging on the edge or overlocking it, I'm now just going to flip the shirt inside out and then get these areas that we cut and just fold it in like you normally would with the hem. So all around that sleeve, I'm folding it in, I'm going to grab my pins and pin it in place ready for when I sew it. And just pin it like that. And you'll see by creating this larger hem, we're going to leave this end open and just sew all along this long edge. And that creates a tunnel that we can then put the elastic through. So I'm just going to pin that on both sides, get that all ready, and then just sew as close as I can to that raw edge, meaning that all this space over here is room for the elastic to go through. So I'll show you that. I'm now just going to sew that in place and I'll show you what it looks flipped side out and what we do to add the elastic in there. So now that we've got the tunnels in the arm area all ready to go, we're just going to grab our elastic and we're going to figure out how much we need to add into there to give it a nice little gathered effect but without affecting where it sits on us. So what I mean by that is if we put too little amount in there, it'll gather the sleeve up so much that it ends up sitting up way too high. And I don't think that'll come up very nicely. So my way to figure that out is we'll grab the elastic, measure it from the start of that tunnel, wrap it all the way around the sleeve and to the end of that tunnel. So that ends up being the length for it to go all the way over the shoulder. So what we want is to cut that at about three quarters. That means it'll still sit at the right spot but have a little gathered effect and we can always adjust it if need be later. So what we'll do with that is I'm just going to eyeball it and cut it around there because that to me looks like three quarters. So I'll cut that and that's my piece that will be going over my shoulder. The easiest thing to do is just grab that piece, hold it up against your rest of your elastic and just cut that at an equal length. So I've got two large safety pins. One I'm going to add just to one end of the elastic, like that. The other I'm going to add to the end but also just attach it to the beginning of the tunnel or just below that on the shirt so that when we pull it through we don't lose it. There we go. So I just attach that so that's nice and secured to the top and then I'll start just threading it through this tunnel what you do is just grab the safety pin, kind of bunch it up a bit, and then just move it underneath. Bunch it up a bit on the safety pin, and then just move it along. Bunch it up, move it along. And just continue that until you've got the safety pin all the way through to the other end. And by adding that safety pin that attached to the top, that just means we won't lose the other end in the tunnel somewhere. And there we go, so I've got that over this side now. I can do the same thing now where I safety pin it in. But I'll pull it through, see how the elastic or gathered effect looks. Maybe this might be a good point just to pin them in place, both sides, try it on and make sure it feels all right. And then we'll sew them in place. So I've got that pinned in place. I'm gonna do the other side now and give it a try on and see how it looks on and make any adjustments from there. So I've tried it on and I'm all happy with the length of the sleeves and how they sit. I'm just going to unsecure these safety pin areas and I'll show you an up close of where I attach the elastic to the shirt so it stays in place and has that nice gathered effect but isn't touching us or itching us too much. So yeah, I'll show you that up close.
So now that we've got the elastic in the sleeves and the neck all cut out, it's starting to resemble the type of top that we want to. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure the body of it is nice and snug around our chest. Because it, we initially would have started off with a top that wasn't quite tight, which is a good thing, it means we need to take it in by a bit so it doesn't sag around here or have some weird like gaping thing when you lean over. So what we're going to do is we're just going to throw it on, keep it inside out, and we'll figure out how much we need to take in and then we'll delegate a few dart points on the front and the back to take it in by. So I've got it on and as you can see there's this weird like gaping large area at the chest and at the back as well. But what we're going to do to resolve this is, normally you could just take it all in at the centre but I want to keep the buttons as a nice cute design feature. So I'm going to just pull it all in, figure out how much I need to take it in by, which would be that much, and then delegate that into two dart points on the front. And then once I've done that, do the same on the back, except that time we can just do it all in one center seam. So grab our measuring tape, make sure where the button up area is, it sits flush to each other. And then we're just gonna pull it in nice and tight. And what we'll do is we'll just measure one side and remember that we measured on the fold. So then when we measure the dart points, we do that on the fold as well. So pull it in so it's nice and snug. Start the measuring tape in there where it's tight, put out to the edge, and for me that is four inches that I need to take in on the front side. So what I'll do is I'll just add a two inch on the fold dart there, and a two inch on the fold dart there. And a good thing about that as well, it'll be nice and tight at the top, and it will kind of flare out and have a nice fit down here. I will end up taking that up because I want it to be a bit of a midriff that I can wear with my high-waisted denim pants but I'll talk about that later. So now that I've found that measurement out I'm going to delegate those and then I'll figure out the back as I don't want to take it in all together and then it ends up being too tight so I'll do it in front and back stages. So now we've tried it on and figured out how much we need to take it in on the front side I'm going to lay my shirt inside out and grab my measuring tape find the center point on one half obviously if you have a button area this is what you would follow if you don't or you just want to get rid of it just do it all in the middle but I'm going to grab my measuring tape, find the center point, so it's 9, 4.5 is the center for me, and just fold everything from there so we know that that's where the dart point is going to happen. So moving everything out of the way, lay that back down, and now that half of that panel is where I'm adding my dart point in. So obviously we measured how much we're taking in on the fold, so now I can measure the dart point on the fold. So that's 2 inches I need to add to this side and then 2 inches to the other side. Just grab my pins, put a pin in at the 2 inch point, and then measure down how far I want to pin down to and put another final pin there. Um, I'm going to make mine 8 inches just because that's normally a nice healthy amount. And then you can either just pin a straight line from pin to pin or draw a line with your fabric chalk. I'm just going to pin and then pull them out as I get along. So you can lay down your measuring tape, use that as a reference from point to point and then just pin from there. Now I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side where I find the center point, fold it from there. and make that my new measuring folding line. And then just measure two inches in, add the reference pin in, eight inches down the other pin, and then draw or pin a line from there. So I've got the two dart point areas pinned down in place as a reference. I'm just going to sew along that and then try it back on and measure the back side and how much we need to take in there. <laughs> so it looks a bit silly wearing it inside out and with the shirt underneath. But you can kind of see it's coming together, which is cute and exciting. So I left it inside out this time again so that we can measure the backside. So as this is a bit 
pretty much impossible to do by ourselves. If you have someone with you, get them to pull it in and figure out how much you need there. Otherwise, if you're like me and just doing it by yourself, I'm going to show you what we can do to get around that. So grab our measuring tape and we're just going to put it across our back and we're going to find the point where it attaches to the sleeve where we've cut it. Start there and then go to the other side and find that point where it attaches to the sleeve. I'm going to measure how tight we want it to be between there. So I've pulled it so it's nice and snug, not like too tight, but just so it sits kind of straight to my back. And that is 18 inches. So now when I take it off and I measure how wide this is, I'm going to take in the difference of 18 inches and what it currently is. I'll show you how we do that. So we found the measurement we want it to be on the back side. So what we're going to do now is just grab this fabric and from the point where it attaches to the sleeve, we're just going to pull it along this back side, keep pulling it until we get to the other side. And that will give me the measurement that the fabric is. So for me, that's 23 inches. And before I found out that I wanted it to be down to 18 inches. So obviously the difference of that is five inches. So I need to take it in by five inches. We just need to remember this time that that measurement isn't measured on the fold. That's the full amount that we want to take in. So when we measure it, so the good sides are facing and we find that halfway point on the back side where we'll add the dart in, we just need to remember that half of five, that was my measurement, is 2.5, and we'll find that on the fold. So essentially, whatever that difference is, halve it and find that on the fold. So I'm just gonna put a pin at that 2.5 area, and again, measure down to an area that makes sense. This time I'm gonna make the point down 10 inches, just so it has more space to veer off. The next thing I'm going to show you is how we're going to clean up these top, top hems just by using the interfacing that we'll cut off from the bottom. So I'll show you that next. So I've taken in the front and back by adding all those dark points in and what I'm going to do now is clean up this top hemline by cutting off a bit at the bottom and using that as interfacing so it's all nice and clean. What I've done is I've measured out from where it will sit down to where I want it to stop. I want mine to be a bit of like mid drift but just a little bit longer so I can still tuck it into pants. So for me that was 12 inches. So I'm going to go from the top where the raw hemline is at the moment, measure down 12 inches. I'm actually going to cut at 13 inches to allow for the seam allowance. So this is where you could put some marks in along there with your pins or with a fabric chalk and then use that as a cutting line. I'm just going to go for it. So at 13 inches I'm just going to start cutting along. And the good thing about that is it leaves this little area here. If you cut that line, you've got this area down here that we can then transfer up here and use that as interfacing, meaning there's less waste by cutting this area off. Perfect, so now we've got something that's resembling the type of top that we're after. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into the sections that we'll be using. So there's obviously the straight back bit that I can use as the back interfacing. This for one panel on the front side and this for another panel on the other side. I've got a button on this bit and I'm actually going to remove it and attach it to the top so that we've got a nice button top of the area and it's easy to undo it and take it on and off as you have that ability to undo it. So just where the seam, where the side seams are, I'm going to cut down there and separate it so we've got the three different panels. Cut that and then that can be the other front side and then that can be all on the back. So what we'll be doing here is interfacing is just adding a layer underneath, but by doing that it means we have a nice clean seam line at the top and we don't actually have any evidence of the sewing. So what we'll do is we'll just focus on one panel at a time. I'll focus on one of the front ones for the beginning. I grab the panel that we cut off from the bottom and I'm now gonna place it good side facing down. The shirt is now facing the good side out, so we'll place them together. I'll align it from, so that's where the button up area is. I'll align it from there 
pin it across there and I'm just going to sew where we stopped cutting under the arm across to there and then we can figure out how to make that so it's less flappy or hide it a bit more. So I'll grab some pins, start from this area here. And then once we have sewn that, so we want to finish at the sleeve or where it stops because once we finish sewing that, we then kind of tuck it in underneath like that. And then it's just got a nice clean seam. Put these other bits aside ready for that and I'll just sew this one for now. So now I've sewn that bit along there and all I'll do is this interfacing, you then tuck it underneath. So now when you look at it, that front side panel should have a nice clean top seam. One thing you should do before finalizing it is that area that we sewed on. Maybe just use your overlocker or your zigzag feature on your sewing machine just to make it a nice clean finish so it doesn't fray. So I'm just going to continue on the rest of the panels, get the matching top front panel and the matching back one and just sew them in place with the good sides facing, the top edges matching and then we'll fold, fold them all so they're hidden on the inside and we'll probably just sew them in and secure them so they don't flap around too much. All those pieces of interfacing have been added into the right spots and the seams all cleaned up. So now what I'm going to do is just fold them all in so they're tucked inside and then that will just reveal the nice clean finish that we're after. So now all the interfacing is in there. One thing we're going to do is just secure it so it's in nice and clean. And what I've done is I've unbuttoned the top area and you'll see this is the interfacing there. I'm just going to align it with the edge of where the buttons are and just sew down there so that keeps it nice and clean and means that it won't move around too much underneath. So all I'll be doing is just sewing on the edge, attaching the interfacing and the main panel so it sits nice and cleanly. So now we've got all the top hem area looking all clean and it's starting to resemble the top that we're aiming for. I'm now going to switch focus to the arms and get a nice gathered effect. So there's a few different ways we can do it. We can either add in some more tunnels where we thread through the elastic and just have like maybe two different areas or one at the end or we can do what I'm going to show you which is how to add a shirt section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep the sleeves for that and then just add a shirt section. So I'll figure out where I want that. I think I just want to take up maybe like the end of the sleeve. So the next thing I'm going to do is just this section at the end of the shirt, which you tend to find at business ones, is this like double layered section. And I'm just going to cut that off as it's too thick and I want it to be nice and loose and fun flowing. So I cut this bit off. Pop that aside. And then I'm actually going to leave this little split area there. Just clean up this hem by double folding it where the raw edges are now. So I'll just do like a simple double fold there. Pin that in place and sew all around there and leave that open. So then where I'll be doing the shirring is where this split starts. I'm just going to do maybe like 10 centimeters of shirring. And that means it'll be a nice like gathered cute area and it will become nice and flowy out there and cute up here as well. So I'll show you how I pin this in place and get it ready. So to add the sharing section into this bottom bit, we're going to turn it so that the good sides are facing back out now. And we're just going to find the point where this split finishes or wherever you want to start sewing. 
and I'm just going to thread the machine with my shirring thread and then just keep going around and around until it's probably about that that amount and gathered. I'll show you how I thread my machine and where I sew and any tips and tricks for when you're shirring. So when we're shirring we just leave the top thread as normal and we just add this stretchy elastic thread into the bobbin. Now mine's all pretty much threaded so I don't need to add any more but if you were starting from scratch and adding some more you would just get it started by placing it where you want and just hand threading it the whole way around. And the reason why we hand thread it is because, I'll just get some more fabric. When we hand thread it, we can control the stretchiness of it. If we use the machine, it'll stretch it out and means that it'll be fully stretched when it's attached. Whereas when we hand thread it, say this was adding a new one in, you would just be able to lightly pull it without stretching it. So when I'm doing that, I'm literally not pulling this at all just lightly threading it around, which means that it attaches and when you start to sew, it'll start sh stretching it out. Cool, so now that I've got my bobbin all thread, I'll replace my bobbin with this one. And just thread it as normal, put it in the machine, pick up the thread, the bottom thread with this one. There we have it. Now it's all ready to go and we just start sewing like normal. So I've got my extra thread aside as normally because that is quite thicker. You can't fit as much as you would onto a normal bobbin. So I might need to re-thread halfway through, which is perfectly fine. So now I'm going to grab my shirt. I've taken off that extra bit of my machine, which is normally there and just made it a little bit smaller. So that means that I can put the sleeve in this area. Hopefully you can see my machine all right. I've now flipped the sleeve so the good side is showing. The reason that we do that is because then all the gathered elastic thread is hidden underneath and all we see is the nice clean normal thread. And then going to pop this in this section, making sure there's no fabric underneath it. And then find the point where I want to start. Obviously there's a few different ways you can do this. If you're a bit more particular and you want everything really measured out, you could draw with a fabric chalk and make sure you line out everything. I'm just gonna go by eye and just figure out if I want a centimeter just to kind of keep the next one a centimeter away and do about 10 of them, which means it'll probably be about 10 centimeters. Yeah, I'll show you how that goes. ended up doing eight rows and this is how the sleeve ends up looking. So it'll have the gathered effect near the shoulder and this gathered effect kind of near the like probably elbow area. I think it'll come up really cute. So I'm going to repeat that on the other side and I'll show you how it turns out. So I finished both the arms with the sharing areas in them. Ended up doing eight rows and just spaced them out evenly so hopefully they'll mirror each other if not like your arms are moving around all the place doesn't matter if it's exactly mirrored so that means the arms and the shoulders are all done i'm just going to re-pick this hole as when i added that interfacing and kind of secured it to there it blocked the hole for this second button to go through so what i'll do is i will get some scissors cut a hole in the interfacing where the existing button hole is on top and then just do a zigzag around the edge of like where the button hole would be and then I'm gonna add another button on the exact top so it's still it's nice and secure up the very top. So what I'll do is I'll just thread the button on the top section there, and again just cut a hole both through the top layer and the interfacing and do a zigzag all around that section so the button hole won't come undone and it can sit in there nice and securely. Once I've done that, I'm then just gonna clean up the bottom hemline and what I'll do with that is what I did with the sleeves, just do a double roll and that is all cleaned up. I'm just gonna do a speed through that because that's kind of all straightforward and then I'll show you through the final result. I'm so excited, it's turning out so cute. Cool. Buttons, here we go.
buttoned up at the top, I'm just going to clean the bottom hem by doing the double fold. And then she's all done. Ah, so excited to add this number to my wardrobe. Just having like a nice, cute, simple piece that you can like easily dress up if you want to like, you know, wear some heels with your jeans or pop a bit of lippy on. Or you can just wear your jeans and some burkos and go have a picnic. Or wear around home. Whatever makes you happy. Radio. Let's get this pinned down and sewn. I get so excited sewing this final bit. Like just everything that you put into this has finally come together. It's a wearable garment. So once I've cut these bits and any other dangling string bits that need to be cleaned up, I'm going to try it on, make sure that it's all fitting okay, clean up any other edges, and if anything needs adjusting, do that. But essentially that's how you transform a thrifted old button-up men's shirt that's not very flattering into a cute essential item. So I can't wait to try it on. I'll show you how it turns out. If you enjoyed this, let me know. If you have any questions as well, let me know. I always want to help you figure out what bottleneck you've got to in your sewing. Um, if you want to see more tutorials like this, please subscribe or follow me at The Essentials Club on social media. I'm always sharing upcoming tutorials or things that I'm working on. But I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next tutorials. So this is how it turned out. I'm really happy with a few of the details, like the interfacing. It's really made it nice and clean up here. The ruffled sleeves. I'm really glad I went with sharing as well. I think that adds a cute little element to the side. And what I realized as well is you can always pull the sleeves off, pull it down, and you've got a multitasking cute shirt. But for now, I'm going to leave it pulled up here. And this is my new baby that I'm adding to the wardrobe.